Pensado's Place is brought to you by... Engineer, producer, mixer, dad. We'll explain that to you. We've got winners, we've got a brand new ITL. Crank it up, baby. It's time for Pensado's Place. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Pensado's Place. We've got a great show for you. And I just noticed I was cut out of the intro, Herb. What's up with that? New rules. We'll take you later. <laughs> I'm looking to see my. We're changing the title of the I'm, show next week. I'm so looking to see some prepared. of Cindy's great work on the monitor, and you fill the whole monitor. Trollocs place coming I should, up. I need to go to these production meetings. Yeah, yeah, What's going probably, on here? You probably want to attend from this point on. <laughs> some surprises in store. Well, at least Leo's is. got the graphics for Trollocs place ready. <laughs> exactly. Guys, I, I, I'm really excited. Um, Man, we've just had a string of some shows that have improved my mixing considerably, and I don't, I don't think today's going to be any exception because, as you know, Herb, the show's all about my, my edification. Of course. That's a Canadian word, edification. Okay, we'll take it as that. Absolutely. But, uh, so how's your week been? It's been good um, because you've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a good week. There's some interesting things going on that uh, will be good for our audience. We'll talk about shortly. It might be a couple of trips coming up where we're going to come to your town and visit you. Las Vegas is in discussion for something relatively soon. So oh, yeah. That, that, that looks, that, that, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a good thing. Um, Man, we got a lot pack, to pack in today, don't we? Why don't we get to it? Let's do it. All right. So, uh, as you guys know, let's get to our homework. Find us at our usual places, Facebook, Twitter, our YouTube channel, Pensado's Place. Like, subscribe. You know we'll get back to you. Either I will or Dave will or Will will. We promise we'll get back to you. Good to see you there. Let's say hello to our partners, Vintage King. Yay. Prom wave. Hey, Vintage King. Good to see you. Carl Ditto is in our chat room live. And, you know, so you got to stump the uh, VK guy question. I do. You know, Will was just here. We were talking, like, sometimes the guys don't get to see the answer. So we're going to start having the answer. <coughs> we are questions. going to start posting the stump the Vintage King dude questions on our website. So, so, so I'm going to have to step up my game. And so start. step it up. I haven't what you got? these guys yet. I, I was wanting to know, is there ever an an instance where an in impulse response actually sounds better than the real unit that it's trying to emulate. Ooh. I had a buddy of mine, Jason, call me. He wanted to find out if he could get an impulse response for the Bricasti. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we know the impulse response isn't as good as the Bricasti, but I'm just wondering if there's ever an instance where it's as good as the original. Answer that. Go to our website. We'll make it happen. And we also want to say hello to our boys, Avid, our mm -hmm. Avid guys. Oh, yeah. Promway, Promway. <laughs> oh, man. I got people calling me right and left about the new HDX systems, how good they sound. Yeah, we may be getting involved in, in helping to talk about that. Uh, let's talk about our Inbox Pro giveaway. Um, what a great piece of equipment. Our friends at Avid want you to get that. Let's make sure you enter at pensadosplace.tv forward slash Avid. Pensadosplace.tv forward slash Avid. You'll see some information underneath us when you see the show. Um, our good buddies at Isotope also are doing things right. Listen, man. Our sponsors do great stuff for audience. It's so Man, cool. I tell you, I'm doing an ITL on Isotope, and it's it's the real deal. I mean, it's that stuff is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. And let's announce a winner. So, the winner of the Alloy Two is me. There you go. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> so, the winner of Alloy Two winner this week is Agatino Artie. Agatino Artie. You see his. Facebook page up on the screen, and uh, congratulations. Let's give him a round of applause. Agatino Artie. Um, the cool part is if you didn't win this week, we're giving one away each week. So make sure you get there. We'll get one to you. An Alloy 2 giveaway each week. We're going to make sure that you get your opportunity to win. Tell him, uh, email me, and I'll tell you my two or three favorite presets on that thing, man, so you can uh, hit the ground running. It's pretty incredible. But if you think Isotope has stopped there, no, no, Kimosabi, they've gone farther. So, on the Ozone 5 Advanced, you can enter a discount code, and it's, you're gonna talk about that in the ITL. The discount code is Pensado. When you check out, you're gonna get $200 off the Advanced version, which retails for about a grand. So 200 bucks off of a really great piece of gear that you sanction, enter the code Pensado, and that code lasts till September 15th. So make sure you do that, and a big thanks to Ozone and, and Alloy and the Isotope family. Quickly, one of the big differences between, I know we got a little time, don't have a lot of time, but quick, one of the main differences to go for the advanced is because you can open the, each module up individually. Mm. 
Which saves you a little processing, so man, that's a big asset. Well, even better is, I hear you talk about it all the time, mm -hmm. I see you use it all the time, but I, I know do. you don't do that unless it's good. No. Uh, uh, last thing, we just wanna quickly mention Mix with the Masters. It has been one of the most entered contests we've had, just a massive response. Thank you so much for that. They do great stuff. As you know, guest speakers include Tony Maserati, Manny American, CLA, who was on last week. Um, Eddie Kramer's coming up. Brower, Andrew Sheps. Brower, Brower has been there a couple of times, one of our favorites. Joe Ciccarelli, <laughs> oh, on and on. Joe. And even better, which Andrew and those, uh, which those guys don't know in France, in Provence, France, is that you and I are talking about you doing one, right? It's a great program. I'm going to do one on cooking. I'm thinking about changing careers. Oh, okay, cool. That cooking stuff's hot on TV, Herb. This, okay. this video stuff, is, I mean, this audio stuff is done. Okay. We, we need to morph over into a cooking show. So watch our next couple of our shows because it <laughs> could, be, could be our last couple of shows. Um, so the, we're going to announce the winner on our website. Once we announce the winner on the website, we'll then announce the winner on the show as well. So uh, wonderful stuff. Toy box is closed. Introduce into the lair and let's go from there. Man, not much to say. We've kind of been talking about it already. I, I wanted to show you a little bit of um, some of the features on Ozone 5 and, and, and how I'm using them. I, I think I'm showing you three or four of the modules. So if you're ready, Will, let's do it. Hey guys, um, from time to time I, I get a plug-in that's just so good, it kind of deserves its own ITL and uh, today's no exception. I'm gonna check, I'm gonna let you check out Ozone 5 especially the advanced version. Uh, the advanced version is a little more money, but you can use the individual elements, the, the equalizer, the exciter, the maximizer. You can use all those and load them independently. And the reason that's good is, is you don't have to load the whole plug in. If you've got a slower computer like I do, then um, it saves you a little CPU usage. I selected a track that's, that, that, that kind of shows it off a little bit. This is a, this is my buddy's um, FYI, Monster Blockers, Addis and, my, and, and the crew. So let's just jump right in. So normally what I start with is um, hip hop basic. But on this song, let's start with Dance Club Master Crispy Drums. So here's without it. Okay, I'm gonna flip it in halfway through. Pretty impressive, pretty impressive. <laughs> Ooh, let's break it down and see what we did. Here's kind of the guts of the whole thing. This is the limiter. One of the things you'll notice right away is this guy up here. This shows you the amount of compression and attack. It shows you the, the picture of the attack, the release, and the amount of compression. So let's, let's, I've got a little too much compression, so let's... Okay, if I can get this wave going by, see, see, see how... It, it just holds it for a little bit and then releases it. And I'm not, I'm not squeezing the heck out of it too much. The margin is the, is the brick wall that it can't go past. Now, if you're in hard mode, it truly is a brick wall, 20 feet thick. It ain't going nowhere. IRC1 is, is, um, controls the, the intelligent release. I kind of like this. This one, this one to me is very musical. IRC2 is a little more of a clamp. IRC3 is probably the most usable one. It, it actually kind of helps you get more transients than soft is, is the, the, least, the least musical. Now you can get even more transient recovery by clicking this button. Okay, notice on these modules you have a little slider. So for example, if we solo the, um, the maximizer. We can 
can get none to all maximizer. So now let's take a look at the dynamics module. A lot of stuff going on, but it's really not that complex. It, it comes up as a four band compressor. And then here's the frequencies that the crossovers of the various bands are. And then here's how you can isolate each band and, and work on it. You'll figure all this stuff out. I'm not going to spend time on that, but, but the one that's really cool So you can see, I, I, I can time my release. I can I can time my attack. So let's 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 use a, a long release and see what happens. Changes the timing. Um, so let's see if we can find a good one. Somewhere in there, maybe a little shorter. Watch what the attack does. You notice the attack is opening afterwards. That gives us a little more of the original signal coming through, which you may want, you may not want. Then again, we've got our, um, we've got our little mix mode in here. And then you can also expand uh, on, on, on this section. You can do a little pre-limiting on this one. Um, I, like, I like to kind of get this guy a little bit of, um, uh, a, little bit, a little bit of juice. Before I hit it, the limiter with it. So experiment with that. Let's let's try the the equalizer. Now the equalizer is uh, really cool. Analog mode and digital mode. Digital digital uses a little more CPU. I t I like the analog mode. Uh, you can you can read the manual. They'll they'll show you the distinctions. So let's try a third octave view for the analyzer. I, I like this view. So, so you, an, another neat thing about this view is, is this little bad boy here. Watch this. So, so you can isolate frequencies. By the way, this is your bandwidth. You can select anything you want to select. I mean. It's crazy. Now the equalizer is pretty special, but I like this ex harmonic exciter. Now what's, what's the difference? The harmonic exciter will allow me to choose various modes, like tape is, is, is a very even harmonic mode, uh, excuse me, odd harmonic mode, and it has you know a, a brightness factor to it. Warm is what you would expect, retro is what you expect. Triode and pento, triode is gives you that 12 AX7 sound, only half of it, which gives you some real nice even harmonics. Then the dual triode uses both sides of the tube, gives you really nice clean harmonics. Let's, 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 let's try a triode. Okay, he, here's the bands that we're working with. Here's the bands that we're working with. So let's, let's watch this. <laughs> I 
does that compare to the equalizer? I'm going to shift them back and forth during the song. I think that's so cool. And then and if you want a little less, you just slide the fader over and get a little less. And um, basically that's, that kind of gets you going. Let's, you know, just for fun, let me show you a couple other presets. I love this preset. It's called Hip Hop Basic. Where is that little bad boy? Watch this. Okay, so I, I, I like that one. That's a good starting one. Let's go back and compare that one with the one we just used, which was this one. But Dave, I'm missing some of the top end. Oh, I'm glad you told me that. Let's see if we can get it back. Anyway, man, there's so much you can do with these plugins. I'm telling you, I just scratched the surface. I mean, these things, are, they're, 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 they're very well designed. I, I, I pulled it up and started using it without reading the manual because I hate reading manuals. And then uh, I, was, I was able to kind of maneuver my way through. Then as I wanted to get more sophisticated with it, I read the manual. And so you can, you can work like the layers of an onion. You can go in as deep as you want and, and as heavy as you want. You all know how much I love MS techniques, and uh, most of the modules come with the option to to use them in MS. So, so you can you can do various things to the middle as opposed to the sides. And then there's another module we didn't get to go into. It's the imaging module, make it wider, and you can do that with various frequencies, not just the whole thing. So it's it's a very impressive plugin, and uh, if you if you read the manual, you'll be able to use everything you want with, with hardly any, if, if any at all, um, latency. I, I don't have a problem with latency because I rarely use, you know, eight, all the 8 million modules that it has. So anyway, want to make sure you are uh, aware of this plugin because it really is an incredible tool and you can use it together and, and I'm using it on the stereo bus on just about everything I do now, or you can take individual elements and, and use those on individual tracks and they, the individual elements are pretty spectacular and the you know imagine a really nice dance EDM style keyboard that you use the widener on in the in the harmonic exciter on so it's limitless it's, it's it's kudos to the guys at isotope really well done i think i said it on the itl but remember to to look at the manual i think will's going to put up uh the website for that and um uh, a lot of good information, particularly on buffer sizes and things like that. I happen to have my hand on a really cool book, Herb. Mm -hmm. You've read it, right? I have. I have. I've read most of it. I got about this far. But we've got Ken Calais on today who wrote this book. Welcome. Hey, how you doing? Glad to have you. you. Glad to have you. Ken, thanks for coming by, man. This is... My this pleasure. Is, this... I don't know if I could do something like this, man. I mean, dredging up all those, all those memories and... Sure, Reliving you your twins. I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's accomplished uh, often. You know, it's actually it's actually really therapeutic. You know, I took I took about a year part time uh, getting writing, uh, getting uh, the, the research done. Uh -huh. Then I actually took about three months solid every day, morning to night. Is writing. that right? God. And it was just it was really great to kind of like go back into my brain and and my memories and and you know assemble the things in the right order and thinking about engineering and what engineering is and what it means to, mm -hmm. to, to make a good record. I mean, it's really, it kind of like brings all that stuff you, you have learned over yeah. the past back up to the surface sure. so you can use it again if you want to. Yeah, some of you guys might be saying, well, why do we have a book about rumors uh, and, and, an, and an author about that on the show today? Because this book is more than just um, a tell-all. It's, it's, um, there's a lot of great information about our craft and our, 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 our chosen profession of engineering that's very, very helpful. And another thing that makes this book relevant to all of us, apart from it being a great read, everybody's going to enjoy this book because Rumors was number one for 
31 weeks well, on the Billboard chart. Well, you make it, I was, was going to make an interesting the correlation. Album number, number one for 31 weeks. In the modern era, you, this is the, like the third largest selling album of all time. Mm -hmm. And in the modern era, what, what folks know today is kind of Adele's success. Mm -hmm. But Ken and those guys had to deal with people that were competitive in this space. You know, I mean, obviously mm -hmm. what they sold was incredible, but mm -hmm. lots of records sold. So the pressure, the, people don't understand that level of scale. That's a lot of no, scale. 40 million worldwide. Yeah. I mean, it, 44 right now, I think. Amazing. Oh, wow. Amazing. So there's a mm -hmm. whole other rare air. We actually later on have an interview that we've done with Tom Elmhurst from, yeah. from Adele, which yeah. gives you some context. But at any rate, um, I had the luxury and fun of spending some time in my formative years with Mick through a lucky accident, spent three or four years running around. And it was just amazing what I learned from a craftsman stand standpoint. People committed to making great art, you know, and, and I know when you manage the process, when the process, I always find engineers and producers, sometimes you have to manage conflict, don't you? Yeah, a lot of a lot of what's being a producer is like is is being a manager. Is mm -hmm. really managing time and schedules and you know keeping things calm and, and you know keeping a clear head with, with those people with all the stuff that they had going on. Yeah, you know there were three group three three couples breaking up. We had the the British factor, three Brits and two hippie uh, Northern California folk. All this stuff clashing at the same time, and and all I was trying to do is basically get you know have a good time and get a good record and, and keep them giving me less hassle than I needed. So how about how about we start at noon every day, guys? Let's start at noon, we'll end at midnight, you know, and just we'll go from there. And just keeping that kind of, you know, oh, if, if you guys awesome. are fighting, I'll tell you what, we're going to work with you two who's not fighting, and you guys go out and have a coffee. Oh, my God. You know, it's, just, it's amazing you survive that. But, well, you, you know, know sometimes but, great art comes out of that. Yeah. Right? It, you know, at the time, it was just, we were just keeping our you know, head above water. It yeah. wasn't, you know, I mean, looking back on it, I was like, whew, I guess we could have, it could have been horrible, but I didn't know it was going to be that big. Right. None of us knew. We were just doing our job. Just making a record. Yeah. Amazing. Don't, was it, was it Rihanna that was climbing the charts while you were making this record? Exactly. Yeah, not, not, not. Not right. the girl from Trinidad. Right, right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, man, um, I'm curious. Creativity, as everybody knows, that watches the show. Um, formative years? What were you trying to form? We'll talk about that oh. later. Uh, <laughs> Only Mick and I know. Okay. Uh, A sentence? When, huh? <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll talk about yeah. that. Um, <clears throat> Like Herb said, there's all this chaos, all this drama, but yet one of the great albums, you know, the, the, of, of all time came out of that process. And, and then you've, you've just, your daughter, as, as everyone knows, Kobe Calais, has is, is got like a huge career, huge success. That process of making, the re of making those kind of records, apparently she learned something from you. What, what, is there any, anything specific that comes to mind that you feel she got from you that's applicable to her success today that came out of your period in the 70s? I'm going to honesty of the lyrics. I mean, you know, if you look back on, I've been asked this so many times mm -hmm. that recently after the book came out. You know, what, I thought that was a pretty unique question. How many people asked it for? Well, not the way you did it. That <laughs> oh, was, good. That was Just really, really, nice, really well nice done. Yeah. Nice <laughs> but, you know, the, what happened with, with the rumors I finally th figured out is there was so much pain in the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And early on, the, the, as the, the three couples were all breaking up, and, and the songs were all written in the studio, so the lyrics were like, uh, like uh, um, salt in a wound. Yeah, these are you know? real time. And things. real time, you're sitting there every day, and we're, in, we're on the third week of making the record uh, th of 365 uh, days, wow. you know. To, to do this, and these lyrics are, are stinging, they're hurting every single day. And so watching the, the group and the relationship, they finally said, you know what, let's be professional, otherwise, otherwise we're never gonna get done. Mm -hmm. So getting back to your point, it was the lyrics and the story of the pain and the, and the suffering and how, that's what Adele sells, that's what, you know, that. it's exactly. a universal language. Everybody seems to identify with those words. Yeah. I, don't, I don't necessarily listen to lyrics that mm -hmm. much, mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, that's what happened. So with Colby, she was all about lyrics. When she wrote Bubbly, she was a young girl, 20 years old, wondering what it was like, imagining what it was like to, to fall in love, mm -hmm. you know, and, and a 20-year-old's uh, uh, idea of what it must feel like. Mm -hmm. So, 
and that seemed to resonate with millions Connected of women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So, and then the other thing that we do that's common between uh, rumors and, and Colby is mm -hmm. I use a lot of the layering techniques that I learned with, with Fleetwood Mac. Mm. In terms of vocals and... and uh, just a, a lot of instrumentation, a lot of colors in the it. background. I mean, we put colors back in reverb and just there's a lot of swirling going mm -hmm. on that, you know, that helps to, to make things more... Uh, Fruit, fruity uh, sonically. Yeah. How, how old was she when she wrote on the Taylor Swift record that won the Grammy? 21, 22. Wow, amazing, amazing. Yeah. And she's such an amazing gal. She said, Taylor said, I'm gonna give you 50-50 for uh, the writers. And Colby said, no. She said, I, you know, she said, this is not, and Taylor, you did, you did so much more and I don't deserve that much. So, and she, she said no, she well, refused to take it. And I thought that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Kudos to her. That's true. How did you feel when 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 your daughter was had a, had a top selling records and all of a sudden after the Glee uh, rumors episode suddenly you got the number eleven album in the country again? I was kind of hard to live again. with, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad. Me, get, get my get my car yeah. door for me. <laughs> I got two records in spanning thirty five years on the charts, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow, I'm bad. Pretty lucky, amazing. Lucky though. is really, you know, I know what the. You know. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Have you have you thought about? Is there any correlation like, like most 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 people today that are in their twenties, know of rumors, but that's not their favorite record. Your daughter's record is their favorite record. Most people in their sixties or fifties, rumors is their favorite record. But you did both of them. So how did you manage? Did you do anything unique in order to, to please both age groups? And why don't both of them like both records? You did both of them. Do I have a PhD? I don't know. If, you know I'm not that smart. Precious no, I actually wrote that down because I, I was, was fascinated brilliant. It was by very, that. was very, very well uh, said. No, but, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, it's like there's not, a, there's not a, a lot of difference between the two records in terms of quality, in terms of songwriting, in terms of great lyrics, but yet... Well, I don't have much to do with that. There's a generation, two, three generations between them, but mm -hmm. yet they're both... It's, it's kind of interesting. It anyway, is. not that interesting because you're not giving me an answer. So. Well, I, well, I think one of the things that he said actually speaks to that. The, the through line is being able to take that lyrical perspective and context, have it connect with women, and that, and, and not just with women, just that when you show pain and you show, when you're willing to show the wounds, Honestly. yeah, and, and yeah, it's authentic, it's, it's, it's honest, people connect to that because we all go through it. And, and that I think is part of the through line that mm -hmm. connects to all those kind of well, records. Why I didn't really answer because you know, I don't take I'm credit for, I don't cr take credit for, the, for, for writing the song. So right. uh, you know, a good producer knows, uh, what, one aspect of being a good producer is knowing who to produce. That's right. You know, and, and somebody who writes great lyrics is like, makes my job so much easier, mm -hmm. you know? And I mm -hmm. mean, and the sounds, I can get the sounds, I can get the layering, I can get the movement of the, of the instrumentation. But I need those. I need those lyrics. I need that that heartfelt emotion coming out of the singer. As as a hyphenate, and that's what those two artists had, you know, in, in common. common you know. Yeah. As a hyphenate, was there a balancing act? Because you know, very few people have producer, mixer, engineer, and dad. You know that that mm -hmm. that's rare air. Was there a balancing act to that? Do you have to step back and be a little bit? You know, I, it, it, but not not too much. You know, she's she's really great. Uh, um, I think one day when in the in the first album we were we were. Um, I had the, I had this the, all the band in that studio and we were trying to get going and she was talking to somebody who was flirting with her or something like that and I said Colby Marie Calais get into the vocal booth now we need you it's kind of a black thing she's, <laughs> whenever she's, you start pronouncing the middle name that means and I I just was kidding and she kind of laughed and she went into the vocal booth but then she did a press interview you know later on and I read about it you know. He, he really embarrassed me. Oh, that's good. But that's it was funny. But, sure, you know, yeah. we have a great time. Oh, great, great. L last question about this. I'm fascinated by it, but this is the last question. In terms of the 70s mm. process, in terms of the 2009, 10, 11, 12 process, what was, the, what was the, the least obvious but very major difference in terms of the, your process? And, and Did your process change at all, apart from the dad hat? Was there something that you that you felt was unique to this time period that didn't exist back in back then? Well, yeah, uh, the, the, you know, it's a big pet peeve of mine. But you know, people today, the engineers today, rarely listen. Mm -hmm. They rarely know how to where how to place a microphone, and, and and they also have the disadvantage of working with Pro Tools, which is instantaneous and a fabulous program. But we had the disadvantage. Maybe I'll put that away of having to work with tape. Tape, as you know, uh, was you know 
big reel of tape, and we had to rewind the tape, which took three or four minutes to rewind mm -hmm. for, to the beginning of the song after we did a pass. Mm -hmm. So we're all sitting there talking. We had to talk for three or four minutes every, between every pass of the song. Yeah. And we talked about, well, what'd, what'd you think of that? <laughs> you know, but we got so much closer to our music. You know, we really got closer. Well, let me play devil's advocate, because you almost lost the entire album because of this wonderful mm -hmm. thing called tape. Mm -hmm. The, the, the tape had started it started to shed on the heads. For those of you that don't know tape, which is probably 95% of our audience, tape is, is a bunch of oxide, iron oxide particles glued to a piece of uh, plastic. And as you run it across the tape heads, it, it, it'll come off. And we're using 456, the one bad batch that had the bad binders. Now we're using uh, um, 3M. 3M. There was, there was a bad batch of that too that, had, that, that the glue came off. Oh, God. And so the, the album kept getting darker and darker and darker. But you tell the story. It's, you t well, you're right, exactly. Yeah, uh, to finish off where you left off it, we were sitting there and I, and I was going, you know, it's, I mean, is, am I crazy? Are we listening to Because we were listening really loud. And I said, am I crazy? It seems like we're losing the top end. Uh -huh. So I turned around to my second engineer, Chris Morris, and I said, would you start checking the tape heads every half hour? Mm. And sure enough, you know, he did a swab of alcohol and Q-tips, and and the next thing it was just filthy. You know? Oh God! And so I said, check it every pass. And every, after every pass, we had he would do a wipe. It was just black. It was mm. just with with the oxide, and and I suddenly went. You know, the, the fog kind of cleared, you know, we were probably a little bit high at the time. You were almost done with the record, too, right? We were in our, yeah, ninth month or something. Oh. Like that. And we had all these precious overdubs and everything else. So suddenly I realized that my basic tracks were really suffering. That's the kick and the, the drums, the bass, and, you know, I mean, everything was suffering, but the ones that were, were had been there the longest were really falling wow. the furthest apart. The ones that we recorded most recently seemed to be closer to saving than the rest. Was, so, it, was there a time when you couldn't tell the difference between the snare and the kick on one song? Yep, yep. I just wanted to make sure that I was not going crazy, and I, <laughs> and I had uh, the I, I put up the kick and the snare on two faders, and and uh, and turned everything else off. So all you heard is, you know. And I and I said, you guys, Mick. I said, Lindsay, come over here and put, tell me which one of those is the kick and the snare. He had no no song, uh, beat reference of right. the music. All I could hear is the one or the other, but they sounded identical. Wow. <laughs> I you guess. had some balls calling the client over there to see the mistake. I would have. No, it wasn't. We lived together. We were. You know, he, I, I had no. I'd have found a way to get that done behind their back. Yeah, we, no, we were family. <laughs> we, you know, everything we shared, and they were they were with us. Every. That's what I say. It's so it's so unique. I mean, with Colby's records, I I rarely get to sit with her, and and in the studio and listen to anything other than the vocals. It's just there's. I think the today's artists are in and out, and they're so busy doing stuff that uh, I don't know. I'd be curious to see what Adele did. You know, was, mm -hmm. did she spend a lot of time mm -hmm. in the studio with the musicians, kind of working on the parts? Mm -hmm. I kind of feel no. I mean, I just work with Gavin DeGraw, you oh, know, wow. and he just boom in and out. And, mm -hmm. So you had a backup, though. You had a tape that you were using yeah. for, for another I, well, purpose. Well, I, I had. This is the weirdest thing in the world. The the, uh, the, the day I, I started tracking at Record Plant, this the studio manager, a really cute girl, I was interested in, Nina Urban. Uh, said to me, you know, we have two twenty-four tracks in there, and I can give you a really good deal on tape. Why don't mo most of our clients uh, run double twenty-four on the basic tracks? I've never ever done it before, never after anything. And and I suddenly the light bulb came on. And I said, that's right. I've been lugging around these tapes. So we we did the basics, and I have fresh drums and bass and guitars, the fresh the fresh basics sitting on another twenty-four. So it, simply, it was. The solution was, we'll just transfer all the overdubs back to that. Mm. I didn't realize, I, I didn't, I, I was too naive to, to know that that's imp almost impossible to do without <laughs> a way to lock the two machines together with time code. That was pre-time code. So, uh. so we went ahead and did, did it the hard way. We manually uh, locked the machines together mm. uh, second by second. Wow. And, uh, you know, now that they, I'm told now that it's impossible to do it, but... They'd, nobody told us, so we actually did it. Unbelievable. Um, this all happened at, at Wally Hyder's studio, and that's where you got your start. I love the story of how you got your start. I think I think our, our audience would find that inspirational, especially the the process of, of your enthusiasm. I, I, I don't think people understand the passion one needs to get past the initial hurdles to get into this business. Can you, can you go over that real quick? Sure. Well, I don't know exactly which part, but uh, I, I was a big fan of recording, I moved to LA. I was actually going to be a lawyer. Mm. So, but I moved to, to, to Los Angeles to get a job and I tried to get a job at all 
the big recording studios, which were Capitol mm -hmm. Records, RCA, sure. you know, all the big names, and mm -hmm. and everybody there said, no, no, you have to go to Wally Hyder's because they they do like live remotes and they'll have much more. Uh, you have had you had chance. any experience at this time? I no, I just recorded. I I had a little home studio where I had two two tracks. I was like the Beatles, bouncing track to track. No school, no nothing. So no, you're, you're no trying nothing. to get a job. Just an ear and and. Um, I played with some guitar, and that was my basic, my basis. But uh, I applied for the job at Wally Hyder's in a suit, long hair, beard, and a suit. Sure. And uh, and I gave him a resume that my mom had helped me fill out, and mm. uh, and uh, the um, uh, Wally called me called me up personally that night and said, uh, Ken, uh, Ken, I want <laughs> I you to come that. down. I want to talk to you. And, and that started. And it started. Yeah, he I, he came in, and I, I walked into the studio, and and, and he we talked and. And he said, "I got a really good feeling about you, Ken. I'm, I'm going to hire you." Wow! And, and he talked, always talked like this. And I and I was like, "Well, I just don't want to get burned." Well, I said, "I'd like before I accept, I'd like to see your studios." Oh my gosh! <laughs> but that was the most famous studio in the country back then. I, Amazing. I know. So he takes, he, he's oh, okay, uh, you know, and I could see he was just he was digging this thing. Yeah. So he takes me downstairs and. And there's Studio Three at Wally Hyder's. He says, "Oh, gee, I can't let, I can't take you in there now. There's a client in there." I said, "Who?" He's a Crosby, Stills and Nash. Mm. I went, "Ah, uh, boy, you know, I'm, we're going in there." Yeah, I said, "I'm good." I'm, yeah. You know, really, you know. He goes, "No, no, no. Let me show you the rest of the studios." And took me into Studio One, and the, there was like a console 40 miles long, knobs everywhere. And yeah. I'm going, you know, Wally, I think I'm good. No, no, let me show you Studio Four. You know, he was like just rubbing it in, sure. but he liked my attitude, at, and uh, so. He hired me, and uh, make a longer a longer story shorter, uh, uh, and I was started second in engineering, and, and I was just really a hungry eager, eager, eager beaver, you know, mm -hmm. and I and I learned with I worked with all the great engineers. I sat behind them. I was their assistant engineer. I took notes. I mean, I I was so ready to, to get in the driver's seat. So mm -hmm. and when I they would, when they leave, everybody leave, you'd go. You yep. take your notes and you'd go through that. I like that. I go into the studio, yeah, and I would practice mixing. I even had the the, the nerve to. Uh, Bill Halverson was working on uh, um, the, uh, the country, uh, the Crosby, Stills and Nash, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a song called "Country Girl." I was crazy about on that record. Uh, I guess that was a CN CSNY album. Yep. But so I went in. To, I called Bill and I said, and I said, Bill, you have these multi tracks that just drive me crazy sitting on the shelf. I said. I would like to transfer, make a copy of Country Girl, so I could personally practice mixing it. And he said yes. Oh wow! And and so I went ahead and mixed Country Girl, and that you know at, at nighttime because we had to, we could use the studios at nighttime for free. Mm -hmm. And I remember Wally found out about it, called me at home, and just he was, he was pissed. Ken, you're pushing too hard. You're pushing too hard. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. But yeah, yeah, we just I, you know, and I was. Was it eight track or sixteen? Do you remember? I think it was sixteen. Oh wow! But, because wow. I did the same thing with, uh, I think it was Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison, yeah. the studio I got my start at. And, but it was only eight tracks. And I couldn't make it sound like anything. I, I almost quit because it was so bad my first try. How <laughs> was your first try? Pretty good? It was okay. You was, know, it was not like the record, but I didn't, you know. <laughs> but your mama liked it. I'm not sure. I bet if we heard it, it wouldn't be good. I'm sure it wouldn't. Quick question going back to um, when Kobe was doing her record. You, you had like a monster writing session in Hawaii. You know, Jason Mraz and mm -hmm. Kurt from One Republic and Karen Diaguardi, I always say her name wrong. What was the technical setup at the house for that? Was there, was it There just, really wasn't a technical setup. It was, it, was a, it was about writing. I, we keyboards. brought some cameras in. And let me, I'd like to preface this by, she, is, she had been living with us. She just wrote, wrote uh, Bubbly and uh, she was kind of, and, and then she had to go on the road. So mm. she was kind of lonely on the road. She mm. was by herself. And two of her dogs died, mm, and she tough. was just brokenhearted. So she started writing all these songs that were just—it was so, so sad, mm -hmm. you know. She was so sad and alone on the road. And so I said, "You know what, honey? Um, I said, you let's let's cheer it all up." I said, "When you're back, I said, why don't we go to Hawaii? You rent the biggest house on the biggest on the nicest beach in in Kauai, mm -hmm. and we'll get all your 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 musician buddies, and we'll go over there." And write songs for three weeks, and let's let's really kick this record off for the start. Mm. And of course, the record company is paying for it, and, yep. and she's going, well, "Great idea, Dad." Mm -hmm. So I had to, I had a, 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 a brought in some recording equipment and camera equipment, and basically we just shot everything on film. And, and any songs that were written were oh, were great. written. 
uh, and and great dad move, by the way. That that that's really cool. I remember and, the first morning uh, that that we were supposed to start that day singing, and Colby and Jason Reeves were they were the closest of friends for mm -hmm. a long time, and I so I woke up at. 6:30, I hear this noise, and 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 they're sitting out, and there's a rainbow in the back oh, nice. backyard of this house we're staying at on a five-acre place, and and she, they're they're playing rainbow, and of course I I was one of the cameramen, and of course I hadn't set charged the batteries or anything. I thought I was gonna do that that day, so I had to run in and grab it and get the shot. And you got it. Yeah, I got it. Oh, cool, cool, cool. But um, we're we're gonna tee up batteries box, but I was just wondering, does, is anything coming? What's coming from both of them, from the from Fleetwood Mac and from Kobe? Are new, are new things well, coming? Fleetwood Mac's going on tour yeah, uh, next, that. next year, yeah. and that should be very interesting. Uh, Colby's got a Christmas record. I'm just finishing mixing the Christmas record right now. Oh, cool! It'll be out October 21st. Very cool. Uh, uh, she's got uh, Gavin DeGraw singing on it. She's got. Uh, uh, Brad Paisley singing on it. Oh, nice. Uh, Justin um, Justin Young is singing on it. It's uh, four original songs, ten classic, really great songs. And We're, copies will be coming to Pensado's Place upon its release. Of uh, didn't you get them yet? Uh, no, uh, you know what? I haven't checked. Actually, them I was going to have you guys mix it. Uh, good call. Herb is a good mixer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my mixes would smoke. My Christmas mixes are incredible. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Those one track mixes you do are really good. Amazing, amazing. I spend so much time. <laughs> How's your arm? Is it teed up for batter's box? Yeah. yeah. Let's, uh, let's I want to ask him one more question. Okay, and then let's get to it. Uh, actually, it's not a question. You, earlier when we were talking, you said you made a statement. I just want, I want our guys to hear it about how you listen with your, some, some guys listen with their ears, some guys listen with their wallet. Can you say that real quick? Oh, I always think it's, 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 it's funny. I mean, you know, so I, true. most engineers that I know, when it comes to like, you know, what is, what's, what, how we're going to mic this vocal, and they automatically go for the most expensive mic in the drawer, you know. Mm -hmm. And see, I, I learned from all the hiders. I just, I, I, I didn't, I, I had to learn by doing it. So I, I put out just a whole string of microphones. But ten even ten for, microphones on Stevie Nicks. Yeah, right? even, even wow. for rumors, I set out, you know, microphone, and I always said, there's a microphone for everybody, you know. And it may not be the most expensive one. Stevie Nicks went down the line. She hit the RE20 and loved it. And that was wow. it. I mean, she just, you know, and, and the Sennheiser 441, it was just magic for her. So she, yeah, I saw her use that know. in videos. I, but she really used that for the record? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you've been known to use the SM57 on 57, vocals. 57, yeah. I got, I got great tricks on getting those dynamic microphones. You know, you get, yeah. you get that proximity effect the low end. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you can, if you control it with the, some tricks, I have a couple of tricks I pop filters and use, and, and you get dynamite sounds. Man, I love that. Let's tee up a, okay. a few pitches. Um, so, so it's not always the, you know, a U47 that might be the, right. the, yeah. the sound. Because with U47, you tend to get some, uh, you know, ambience from the room, and, and maybe that's not what you need. Right. You know? But we're paid to use our ears, use them, you know. Yeah. That's the first well, I, a lot of guys don't do that anymore. I know. Uh, might be because their ears aren't as good as yours. Okay. Well, I don't think they practice. You know, if I, I look at it as starting, you know, starting with a microphone, placing the microphone, and then coming into the studio and getting an adjustment, putting mm -hmm. some, some plugins on it in today's world, or back then, mm -hmm. compression and EQ. But a lot, of, a lot of guys figure, well, just put the mic there, and we'll get into this, the, the mm -hmm. plugins later. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, if you get over here and move this microphone, you'll find out that it, actually what you want to do, it, while you start thinking about it, you go, you know, that guitar sounds a little dull. Could you just, you know, do something? And next thing you know, you're 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 working with the instrument and the musician changing the sound rather than sitting back here. Oh, I got this fancy plug-in. Changing the gear. Whoopee, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean. Yep. Okay. Let's tee it up. Okay, Ken. Tee it up. Uh, let's start with an easy one. Piano. Uh, well, probably like uh, I don't know, four forty ones. Uh, sorry, no, four fourteens. Okay. Four fourteens, four fifty one. I used to love those things, and oh, I would yeah. cradle them in with uh, with uh, strapping tape in, mm. in between the piano and just get some awesome sounds. Cool. Uh, lead vocals. One favorite? Well. Hard to say because you just said you. Uh, yeah, I, I still say everybody try them out, but I, you know, um, I, one favorite I've been favored to have is a, is a Shure uh, SM27. Mm. It's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's about a $800 microphone and I have some $25,000 microphones, but this, this, well, Sure 27, it's just, gets it's it so amazing. Mm. It gets the edge and the bottom, and it gets the mid-range, and, it, and, it, it's, and it's, got, it's open, it's killer. Wow. Acoustic, acoustic guitar? Uh, ECM 50. Okay. Electric guitar? Uh, I usually use two mics on that, you know, when I'm, when I'm engineering, but, mm. um, you know, I like to use a, uh, 
let's say a 57 or 58 and, mm -hmm. and a 451 or a 414. 57 close, 414 away? Right, and then flip the phase back and forth and, and adjust them and, and, and let them cancel out until you get the sound that's really cool. I got a tough one for him. Okay. I got a tough one for him. Right. I might get him on this one. Tee it up. Rhodes, Fender Rhodes. Fat box. Oh, God, he got me, her. He did. Damn. He did. Okay, overheads. Um, I, you know, I'm a big fan of the 452s and the 414. 10 dB pad? Yep. Uh, kick drums. Or 20 dB pad on the, on the 52s. And, you know. right. mm -hmm. Kick drum, well, um, you know, again, I want to preface that my engineer does this most of the time, so I'm talking about more of what I did on Rumors. Mm -hmm. So kick drum would have been a 441. Okay. You know? Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, RE20, I'm not a big fan of a lot of extra bottom. I'm not a big fan of the subs and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. not a big fan of a bass amp on a bass mic, uh, on a bass instrument. I don't, I normally, I'm, most you, of Rumors you, you was, was my last, that was my next one, bass. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw your nose. Uh, <laughs> I cheated. <laughs> no, but bass, I, I tend to go direct, you know, yeah, more me. times than not if we're talking about electric bass, you know. Okay. Uh, I can always add an amp later on. And... Okay, last one. I'm a, I'm, it's a tough one. It's live strings. Live well, strings, well, I mean, 415, you know. Mm -hmm. and, you know I mean, I, the, the, just, and I like, I like close micing. I like to close mic. I, I use more mics and, and get down, and I like to get the resonance. I, like I like that too. You have more control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How'd you do, Herb? He did great. I think he, I think he kicked my ass. Is what he did. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. I, I don't feel good. I have never won one of these things yet. <laughs> That's true. Well, and I'm the judge. That's what's sad you're, about you're, it. You're a good pitcher. I was just bugging. <laughs> yeah, but but you, got, you got wood on all the balls. But I want to go back to one thing. The 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 the, the Sure 27. I'm just not familiar with that mic. I thought I knew every mic ever made. It's uh, it's kind of new. It's it came out about a year ago, and oh, uh, okay. and they did a really cool thing with it. Uh, I'm not. This is not a sure commercial, but they uh -huh. they came out with you know the the pop the windscreens come yeah. out and you put them on a boom. Well, they put one that's magnetic. It can actually it sits right on the front. It's a, just a windscreen like that. It's not a foam windscreen. It's a metal one, but uh -huh. it just goes and it sticks right to the microphone. Mm, mm. But is is it a dynamic dynamic or a condenser? It's a uh, dynamic. Oh wow! Yeah, but it's got the kind of top end you like. It's, it's just so great. I is mean, it is it a lot like the James Brown SM7? Is it a lot because like, it has the seven in the number? Is it? It's not. It's 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 like a different. It kind of looks like a it looks like a smaller uh, a U M49. Okay. Kind of the shape of an M49, but smaller. Isn't it kind of unusual to have a, a dynamic that expensive? I'm trying to think of other dynamics like like the Sennheisers. Those even only go like five six hundred, but an eight hundred dollar dynamic that's kind of unusual. Yeah, I'm not sure. I've never bought one. I mean, I think maybe it's four hundred to eight hundred. You never stole one and took it to a pawn shop? No. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that I'm going <laughs> to. Let's bring in our oh, friend uh, G.I. Griffin, who's over in the it's corner. It's about time. It looks like I ran out of questions uh, with that uh, one. <laughs> I'm here to save you, pal. Save me, G.I. Uh, 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 G.I., uh, how you doing? I am doing fantastic. Good. We got some questions for our guests? Yep. There let's is. tee up a couple. All right, let's go. First one is from Andre uh, Champolu. Ken, how did you get a consistent bass drum sound out of Mick Fleetwood, despite his notorious light-footed playing? Holy cow. Well, yeah, we called Mick, uh, that's a good question. We had a, uh, we called Mick uh, old Featherfoot. <laughs> and Featherfoot. he was the hardest guy to, to, to uh, it was almost impossible, because he, he, would, he would be so inconsistent, and so when he hit hard, it sounded great. But most of the time, we would listen to his kick drum mic, and you, would, you could hear him singing to the track. He would kind of go, ah, 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 while he's playing the, the drums. Mm. And you'd hear it in the kick because it, the, he, we had to have the mic open so loud. So basically we had to, we had to just you know, get, a ta get a towel or a pillow in there, you know, tighten up that, that, the head so we'd get a mic real close to it. And um, uh, just and we just had to ride it. You know? yeah. Basically just had to ride the kick in and out and, and use a hell of a lot of EQ. How many, uh, how many takes did you do on average on, on, a, on a song on that record? There were like 30 and 40 takes, right? Yeah, including false starts. I mean, we probably took sure. 10 complete, of, you know, and, and we'd start another day. We might do, you know, we might, we'd take our tracks home and listen to it. And, and we were all living in the same house and I'd bring my Reeboks, we'd play the, what we did that day. And, we didn't nail it right that we would go back to the studio and, and hit it the next day. G.I., tee up another one. Building on the number of takes, Session Recording wants to know how much of the Rumors tape budget was actually spent on tape. 
<laughs> <laughs> he must have been alive back then. How, How much what? How much of the tape budget was actually spent on tape? Well, there wasn't a budget. That was a beautiful thing. Yeah. But, you know, we spent we spent a lot of money on tape. We uh, we used to to whenever we wanted to get Mick, get a day off because Mick never wanted to give us a day off, and mm -hmm. we were working 30, 40 days straight. You know, uh, at least 12 hours a day. Wow. So whenever we wanted a day off, we'd start to say, "Geez, you know, Mick, we got." all our stuff on these master tapes, and I sure hope we don't have an earthquake or something. And he'd say, okay, back up, safeties for everybody, you know? So, <laughs> so they would, we would do safeties all day. So we, we made safeties, I think, maybe every, we must have made 12 sets of safeties. Just that right. And wow. we would put them in balls, because Mick was just so, you know, nervous about this. Sure. I mean, he was fun to tease. When we got to, when we were mixing at the, uh, up under the, uh, uh, at Producers Workshop in Hollywood, we were right under the Hollywood sign, and so we were sitting there. You know, we, you wait till Mick gets a little bit buzzed, and we say, "You know, Mick, <laughs> you seen that movie Earthquake? Is filmed right up there. That's where the Hollywood sign is. There's a dam up there, and the reservoir, you know, came down." <laughs> so, when have you made safeties, lady? Safety. Exactly. <laughs> Break. So we used a lot of tape. GI, give us another one. Uh, this one's for Dave. Uh, this is from Mike D. Should I approach my mixing the way you approach learning new plugins? Uh, experiment, learn actual techniques, and then come back to experiment again with the newfound knowledge, or just learn all the techniques and then practice applying after that? Well, Mike, that's a good question. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick answer because I want Ken to take up most of the time, but the way I learned was just OJT, and, and that was kind of what Ken was talking about, the way he learned. There's just no substitute for being around guys that already know it and then pick their brains and when they leave, just practice, practice, practice. The more you, the more, the more you do this, the better you get. I promise you, it's, it's like cliff diving in Mexico. You can read all the books you want, but until you walk up to that cliff and jump, you're not learning anything. Is that uh, you're feeling good? Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quick, another tip too, you know, what, what a lot of guys need to, to know is, is is set up your console before you start mixing. Set up, you know, make sure you have a, some nice effects, some nice reverbs, some nice delays, things like that. So you're, you know, you're ready to pull, turn up a knob and, and get in any effects so you can put some frosting on the instruments. You're not thinking, you're just right. Being I mean, just creative. get that all ahead of time and just get it out of the way. Then, mm -hmm. then when I put, what I do is I put up the faders. I start, I look for the heart of the song. You know, often it's an acoustic guitar and with the vocal, or, and so you find that heart, and then, and because the, a lot of times, I mean, you can just build that heart up, and you could throw away half the instruments true. you don't need it. Mm -hmm. So true. But if you got the effects ready to go, that that's going to keep that's going to keep the right side of your brain out of this activity when you're when you're doing these things with the faders. You're making up, bringing. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, that sounds good. Let's put ooh, a little bit of reverb, boom, boom, and you can work. You can really develop and fine tune what you're looking Great for. Advice. Great advice. Great advice. G.I., give us one more. Do you have another one? Yep, I sure do. Uh, this one's from Sean Cave. Ken, love the work you did with Fleetwood Mac. Any tips for how to control a session with band members who are going through intense drama amongst, uh, amongst themselves? What's a tactic uh, that can help refocus the group on making a great record and not drama? What's your tactic? To Kick them out. <laughs> no, I've done it before. I've, I've actually I was going to say small arms fire. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've had a drummer who was just he wouldn't stop playing cymbals, and so he came into the studio the next day, all the cymbals are gone. <laughs> there you go, yeah. my kind of guy. Real I mean, clear. You know, it, to me, a producer's got to be. You got to be. You know, you have to be a firm hand. You got to be a father yeah. right, to these guys. You have to, to to say, look, guys, this is not working. If I'm not happy, if I'm not feeling comfortable, if we're if we're stopping and starting and stopping and starting because you guys are fighting, then then something's wrong. And you know, don't be afraid just to say it's not working. You know, and and, and bring in. And sometimes it's it's better to bring in pro professional musicians where you get the job done in, in a half hour or an hour than it, than it is to deal with with uh, uh, immature musicians who don't have discipline. So is that, if that's what he was talking. Absolutely about. no. Yeah. So last question is for me. Did you have a good time? Oh, yeah. Went fast. Yep. Thank you so much for coming. How do I get your job? We I so appreciate it. Uh, I've been trying for years. Talk to years. my manager. Talk to my manager, David Zaha. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted, that, we... I wanted that chair from day one, but I get over here in the corner. <laughs> we really do appreciate your Thanks, time. Uh, spent. We always ask if people will come back because we only scratched the surface. So if we called you again, and would you come back Absolutely. and be our guest? Please give our best to your daughter. We're we'll so... Get him, we get him back on the Colby Calais book. What's that? Oh, that's right. And music, Coming out too. in a couple of years. Cool, cool, cool. 
Uh, we're happy for the success, and congratulations yeah. to you guys. Thanks congratulations. Your daughter's a very special talent. Uh, she absolutely. is. She's, just, she's really a sweetheart. It's nice to see somebody break against through, the grain. Breakthrough is one of my favorite records mm -hmm. of the last five or six years. I love that record. She hasn't She hasn't let a thing go to her head. She's, you know, just really, I mean, just... Says a lot about her parents. Well, I, Absolutely. Maybe your mother. <laughs> David, say goodbye. It's been a very fast hour. No. Okay, let's stay here. Then Kevin and I will talk. <laughs> Man, guys, I hope you got as much from this as I did. Um, there's a lot of information that, 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 that we got to you today. Some of it you might have to rewind a couple of times to get because Ken says it like it's so easy to understand, but some of you guys, and me included, I'm going to go back and listen to this one a couple of times. There's there's a lot of stuff I can learn. So, hey, can, can, I, can I say something? Well, of sure. course. You know, if you guys are, have any questions, you just email me at my email address. You'll find it on my uh, my book website, makingrumors.com. Okay. And I'm happy to answer anybody's questions. Me right too? Now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll do it. Just, just say that Dave sent you. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Hey, guys, got a lot of uh, cool things coming up for you. Uh, so we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.